So, right before lunch, as you can see, how can we end our dependence on animal products, which are ultimately destroying our planet's natural resources? Is it possible to make an omelette without eggs? In this keynote demonstration, Josh Tetrick, CEO of Just, will show us how we can live a sustainable lifestyle through plant-based products with a little help from chef Kai Manachi. Moderator is Sam Gill from Chinook, so please welcome them on stage for this interesting presentation. Hi, and welcome to a world first for Web Summit, the first time that there's been any kind of cooking demonstration or indeed anything related to technology and food, as far as we know, at Web Summit. Had to be you doing it, Kamana. Exactly, exactly. That's why I'm here, because food makes people happy. That's right. And, and it's also going to, we're going to see a first for Portugal, which I'll let Josh introduce in a moment. The reason we need to be talking about food at Web Summit is that, and particularly at Planet Tech, is that livestock sector contributes some 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions. That's equivalent to all of the vehicle exhausts in the world. If we're get, going to reach the you know, UN agreed two degree limit, let alone the 1.5 degrees that the IPCC is saying we need to reach within the next 12 years, we need to drastically reduce meat consumption. We also, for other reasons, need to think about the impact of livestock on environmental systems. You've got water pollution, soil pollution, air pollution associated with uh, with, with the livestock sector and yep. the rise of antimicrobial resistance. So we need to reduce our meat consumption. I guess the place to start, Josh, is you know, why employ technological innovation to meet that challenge and how? Yeah, I, I, the reason is because we have to, right? The reason is when you think about the food system today, the issues are people aren't eating. So about a billion people go to bed hungry every single night. Uh, the issues are people are eating in a very unsustainable way. The issues are people are eating in a very unhealthy way, right? You have type 2 diabetes accelerating. You have obesity accelerating. You have billions of animals living behind the walls of factory farms. The food system is not just, right? It's not fair, and we need to fix it. But the problem is the tools of the current food system are limited. We use processed sugar. We use conventional animal protein. We use soy, we use corn, it's not enough, right? It's like trying to solve the environmental challenge of transportation, but all you have is an internal combustion engine, right? It's not enough. So technology comes into it by helping us expand the toolkit. We need new tools to be able to solve the problems. Um, at the end of the day, it's also got to taste good, and that's where some of the best chefs in the world like Kamana come into the picture. So what is it that you're introducing for the, for the consumer? So the, the mission of Just is just this. It's eating well is a basic right. We want to make it easy for everyone to eat well. We decided to start with a big challenge. We decided to start with the cheapest, most abundant source of animal protein on the planet, the conventional chicken egg. So about 1.1 trillion chicken eggs are laid every single, year, every single year around the world. Most eggs come from places that if you saw it, you wouldn't be too proud of it, right? Use a lot of land, use a lot of water, because these chickens eat a lot of soy and they eat a lot of corn, also a lot of food safety issues. So we stepped back and we said, is there a new tool, instead of the end result of a chicken's ovulation cycle, could we find something else? And it turns out there are 357,000 species of plants in the world. So what our company does, Sam, is screen through all these plants. We look at the molecular features of the plants, we look at the functional features of the plants, and if we do our job well, we're able to use all this data to find plants that do the things we want. So in the case of our most important product, we found a little bean called the mung bean, in China it's called the green bean, in India it's called mung dal. And when we take this bean um, and we throw it in a pan, it actually scrambles, or even better, makes an omelet like an egg but it uses less land, it uses less water, it's free of cholesterol, and we think it's gonna be the future of how people actually eat eggs. And what's, how does it compare to an egg in terms of taste, but also in terms of the nutrient profile, where yeah, I get so my protein and, 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 and you know, my omega-3s and all the, the, the micronutrients that I look for in an egg? So the, the product has relatively the same amount of 
Uh, protein uh, is an egg has. It's free of antibiotics. It's free of cholesterol. Uh, Kamana has scrambled this egg, I think, in Lagos, Nigeria, Mumbai, Shanghai, Beijing, all across the South. Um, you know, it's really important when we do things like this that it, it doesn't just work uh, up on, here on stage, right? It's got to work in people's homes. Uh, it's got to uh, taste like people are familiar with. And we've been working for a handful of years to, to make that a reality. It's got to taste right, but it's also got to be coming in at the right price point, and it's yeah. got to be convenient for people. How difficult are those, are, are those sort of elements to, to crack? So the, the, the instructions are pretty simple. You'll see my man doing it here. It's scrambled like an egg. It's not any more complicated than that. Um, right now, the price, it's about uh, four or five times more expensive than con a conventional chicken egg today. In the next couple of years, we want this to be below the cost of production of a conventional chicken egg. The point of what we're doing is not for vegans and vegetarians. If you're a vegan or vegetarian in the audience, thank you for eating well. Um, that's not why we're here, right? My, the, we're here, I see a few. Uh, we're here because of people like my dad. We're here because of all the folks out there that want to eat better, but often eating better is too hard. It doesn't taste good. It's too expensive. So really what we're trying to do is make the ethical choice, right? The choice that's a much closer to our values, the cheapest and the tastiest, because our theory goes, if we can make the ethical choice the cheapest and the tastiest, then everyone will do it, and that'll instigate the change we want. So you mentioned some of the markets you've been testing this out around the world. Clearly, the sustainability challenge goes beyond, you know, middle class audiences in Portugal or in the United States. Yeah. I mean, if the average Chinese consumer starts eating meat at the same level as the sort of standard American diet, you know, all of our hopes of, of, of you know, meeting climate goals, so on, goes out, Not gonna know, work. Go, go through the roof, right? Not going to work. So how are we going to change diets on a, on a larger scale, and, and what kind of markets are you looking at? Yeah, I think there are, there, there are a handful of ways to improve the system. One is behavior change. I am not a big believer in behavior change, primarily because I think even an audience full of progressive technology sort of astute people, I bet you most of you eat meat, right? It's very hard to change the behavior. So how do you figure out a way to just get people to do the right thing by making the good thing taste really good, making the good thing be more affordable. And the kinds of products that we're focusing on, Sam, are eggs, and you'll see in here in a second, meat. We don't want people to change. We don't want to feed people space food. We, we want people to enjoy eggs with their family in the same way they normally enjoy eggs in Mumbai or the same way they would enjoy tomato and eggs in Shanghai or Beijing or the same way they would, uh, they would uh, enjoy a typical uh, omelet in Portugal. We don't need to reinvent how people do food, right? Human beings have been eating food for tens of thousands of years. It's got to be tasty. It's got to be affordable. It's got to be clean. And we think if we can do that but make it ethical and sustainable, we'll do something really meaningful. What kind of resistance have you had from the incumbents. I mean, the meat yeah. industry is pretty large and powerful. You would yeah. have thought they, they w wouldn't be ready for this kind of disruption. We've had, we've had two things happen. On one hand, we've had the industry resisted a little bit when we started, but I think today, the most exciting thing that's happening in the company is we've had the industry embrace what we're doing. So the most important thing that we're doing today is actually with a large egg processor in Europe called Eurovo. So this is the largest egg processor in Europe. And instead of just doing the same thing, they decided that they wanted to make a plant that scrambles like an egg. So we're going to be working with them beginning next year to manufacture the product that you're going to see scramble here on stage. So an egg company, right, a traditional player is thoughtful enough, is smart enough, cares enough to take this product, manufacture it in their facilities, and then get it out into the world, into Portugal, into the UK, across the EU. And to me, that's when change actually happens, right? When it's not just young companies in Northern California doing it, right? But it's the biggest meat processors around the world. It's the biggest pork producers in China. And they see that there's money in it. They see that there's ethics in it. They see that they can build an even better company by embracing it. So they've seen the writing on the wall. But what about governments? Do they, do they understand what's happening here? I mean, if you think about renewable energy, you know, governments many anyway are starting to recognize the importance of the energy transition yeah. either putting in the incentives the tax breaks or through r&d funding you know yeah. supporting the basic research do you get that kind of support from from oh. governments for you know, the transition so, in food so truly some governments get more than others uh, singapore is at the tip of the spear of actually getting it uh, we've been really effective at working with china we're going to be launching this for the end of the year in china their regulatory authority approved this uh, it's been approved in the U.S. So some are a little bit more ahead than others, um, but it's up to us to share the story, be honest about the science, 
uh, be true about the safety uh, because it is uh, perfectly safe. Yeah. Um, and, and hope uh, regulators get how important it is for their country and for the world. That's great. So I, 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 if you're okay with it, Sam, uh, you can't do the food thing without actually making food. And as Sam said, uh, Web Summit doesn't really have a tradition of some of the best chefs in the world actually cooking on stage. So this is the first uh, at Web Summit. Uh, Kamad has been around the world with me. He's been on TV shows like Cutthroat, Catch, Cutthroat Kitchen. He's an amazing product developer, an amazing dude. I'll, I'll let him take you through exactly what's going to happen. All right. Aloha, everybody. My name is Kaimana Chi. I'm a chef originally from Hawaii, now living in Washington, D.C. But I tra travel around the world with Just. And, and I think I have one of the best jobs in the world. I get to eat food everywhere I go. Uh, I get to cook food that's not only healthy, good for your bodies, but it's good for the planet. And most importantly, it's delicious. Um, this is for many of you, it's going to be the first time you ever see a bean, a legume, the mung bean, known in Asia for over 400,000 years in the food system, 4,000 years in the food system, um, is going to scramble just like an egg. So I'm going to make a little veggie omelet. We got some veggies in there right here. So this was, it was kind of a, you can imagine about six and a half years ago when I started, the idea was, can we find something in the plant kingdom, could be a grain, a bean, who knows, that scrambles like an egg. We didn't know anything but that, right? So we screen, we screen, we screen. Uh, we found a lot of plants, we throw it in a pan, it would just evaporate. Uh, and then finally, we found this little bean that's been in the food system for about 4,300 years. Uh, again, you know it as green bean, mung dal, mung bean, that when you throw it in a pan, it scrambles. It makes an omelet. So while you can't see what's going on, I'm going to tilt the pan a little bit. Just like an egg, what, what our product developers, they were challenged with a few things. Uh, not only did they have to get the texture of an egg correct and the taste, the versatility of the taste of an egg, but one of the most important things was when the average home cook took just egg home, the egg had to behave just like a regular chicken egg would in a pan because we cannot reteach the world how to cook eggs. So if I hold this up a little bit, just where the heat is concentrated in the pan, uh, you're going to start to see gelation, the egg coming together. I've had the awesome experience of cooking eggs around the world. So you can make it very, very custardy and soft like they do in France with butter. And uh, you could cook it like in Japan with sesame oil and soy sauce and make a nice savory egg. In Denver, you can make a Denver omelet, which is uh, meaty and savory and, and a little bit more firm uh, texture. So everywhere around the world, people eat eggs a little differently. Uh, this is my first time to Portugal. I had both a uh, very firm uh, curd egg and then I had a very, very creamy egg. So again, I think I have one of the luckiest jobs in the world. I just get to eat and cook. Um, so here we go. I'm going to just, we have our veggie omelet going. I'm going to roll this up into an omelet. And why are you making that Kaimana? Josh, maybe you can tell us about the other product that Kaimana is just starting to heat up here. Yeah. So... In, in thinking about the food system, right, we want people to eat well. The tools of the existing food system are not working, right? Soy, corn, conventional animal protein. The first part of our toolkit is the plant kingdom. Well over 300,000 species, almost entirely unexplored. We explore it, we find beans, we scramble. That's one. Second is meat. How do you solve the meat problem? Billions of animals are processed every single year. Process, which is just another word for killed requires lots of land and lots of water. How do we fix that, right? How do we approach that? So we decided a different approach. And instead of using a plant, we actually took cells from animals, right? Could be a chicken, could be a pig, could be a cow. We fed nutrients to those cells. We don't need to even look at the animal anymore. We don't need the land, we don't need the water, we don't need to deal with their waste. We actually manufacture meat in an entirely different, healthy, clean, safe way. It's called cultured meat or clean meat. And in a moment here, uh, Kamana is going to show you uh, actually what it looks like. So this is, Kamana, you want to just yeah. say so what again, the hell that is? We have a veggie omelet, a little bit of peppers, onions, rolled right into an omelet again. Having the, the product perform just like a regular chicken egg would at home was definitely one of the most important requirements that our product developers had to work with in order to have a successful product. Uh, so you can, again, make a hard scramble, a creamy, soft custardy scramble, a nice omelet, a little frittata, uh, and have the same feeling of an egg, but just a little bit better for you and better for the environment. So you got, so the plant that scrambles, 
What the, the picture you see in the background, we call this just chicken. So just chicken is not made from a mung bean, okay? It's not made from soy. Just chicken is made from chicken. It's just chicken. The difference is we just didn't need to kill the animal. Eventually we're gonna do beef, we're gonna do pork. There are a lot of folks out there in the audience, my dad, my mom, folks that I was raised with in Birmingham, Alabama, they don't want plant-based meat. They don't want vegan meat. They don't want vegetarian meat, right? They want meat. They want bloody, real, primal meat. I see my friend nodding his head in the front row. And instead of denying that, instead of pretending that isn't the reality that we live in, we said, what would it look like if we just make meat? Because human beings for 400,000 years, Sam, have been eating meat. First, they needed a spear to kill the animal. Now they need industrial machinery to kill the animal. But for the first time, we can give them real meat. <laughs> this is the very first product that we're going to be releasing. It's called Just Chicken. Uh, we intend to release it before the end of the year. It'll be the very first time an animal product was sold without killing the animal. And we think in a handful of years, whether that's 10 or 20, the majority of the meat produced in this world won't need to be produced at the, under, at the other end of killing anything. We'll just need to sell, we'll just need nutrients, and we can feed the world in a much better way. And this is, you think, at least the first time that clean meat's been cooked in Portugal? I, as you know. I would be shocked if, uh, if, it, if it has happened before. But, but on clean meat, I mean, the big challenge is, I would have thought, our price, but also consumers' reactions. There's a kind of, there's more of like a yuck factor for people when they encounter yeah. meat that's been cultured industrially, even if it is chicken. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little different, that's for sure. I, I think at the end, what we want to do is we want to make it transparent. Uh, we want to make it open. Uh, we want uh, folks in this audience to, to visit the facilities that we actually make this meat. You know, today you don't want to vi visit the facilities that are actually processing animals for our food. We want to be open about it. We want to source cells from the highest end animals in the world, the best chicken, the best beef, the best pork. And at the end of the day, um, as we've seen in so many different areas, we think if we can make it taste really good and ultimately we can make it more affordable than what's out there today, that's when we'll get a systemic change. So I very bravely volunteered to try the yes. Just Omelette. Yep, and Just Omelette. Anna, our MC. Yep. Backstage was interested to Anna, come out and try uh, the you're, uh, try the chicken. You're, you're the chicken taster. There you go. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Anna, the oh, it smells like chicken. chicken. And I asked you, I asked you backstage if you like chicken. I do. Okay. I'm feeling a little observed right now. <laughs> What do you think? It could fool me. Good. What it's do you th very good. Thanks, Anna. What do you think, Sam? Yeah. I mean, it tastes like, egg. Uh, it tastes, tastes like a very nice omelet. Well thank, done. Come on. You. It's great. Thanks, Sam. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for thank you. introducing this World First, World First for Web Summit. You bet. And, and for Portugal in terms of clean meat. We wish you all the best. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Well, with Thanks, all. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thank you. <laughs> With my food on my plate. Thank you all you for might, being Anna, here for the first have... part of Planet Tech. We'll be back in half an hour after a short break. Please join us for an incredible and, believe me, historical afternoon here at Planet Tech. I'll see you there.